In this lesson we will take a look at different units in Cinema 4D and how we can combine them. In this little example here I have two ranges. So the first range goes from 0 cm to 200 cm and the second range goes from 0 degrees to 360 degrees. The first one is a position or a movement and the second one is a rotation. If I now want to connect those two ranges with Expresso I have a problem because this one here is centimeters and this one here is degrees. So I need uh, some, some kind of node to connect those two or to convert the centimeters to degrees. For that we have a great node in Expresso which is called the range mapper. The range mapper is my favorite node in Expresso and trust me if you start to work with Expresso you will uh, use the range mapper in almost every setup. The range mapper works like this. It has two inputs and two outputs. The, on the input side we have the input lower and the input upper. And on the output side we have the output lower and the output upper. With uh, input lower the range mapper asks us what's the lowest value I can expect. So in this case it would be zero centimeters. Input upper means what is the highest input I can expect in our case 200 centimeters. On the output side we can tell the range mapper what he should do with this range here. So we tell him the lowest output should be 0 degrees and the highest output should be 360 degrees. So what the range mapper does is he takes our 0 centimeters and maps it on 0 degrees and then he takes our 200 centimeters and maps it on 360 degrees. So if I move between zero, 0 centimeters and 200 centimeters on the output of my range mapper I will move through 0 degrees to 360 degrees. So he maps this range onto this range. This is pretty helpful and I will show you in cinema how, how, what we can do with it. So here we are and let me just create a cube again and a null object. And we call this one control. I will create an Expresso tag just on this null. And I have my Expresso editor again docked here. Okay. I'll take my null over here and make it a star that we can see it. Make it a little bigger. Okay. Now I want to do the following. I want to take my star and uh, lift it upwards and with this movement I want to control the rotation of my cube. So let's do this. Expresso editor, I'll take my null object and my cube. And now I take coordinates, position, y position and on the cube I will create an input port, coordinates, rotation and let's take the banking. As you see here, I have chosen the position y, which is a real, if you look down here, and not a vector. If you choose coordinates, position, you see that the first one is just called position. This is the vector, which is the combination of the three coordinates, x, y, and z. But you can also choose just one of those components. If I now connect them directly, I can also do this. If I take a look at them now and I start to lift my uh, null object, the cube spins around but insanely fast. And if we take a look at our uh, cube down here, it already rotated 9433 point something degrees. So way too much. So we go back into our Expresso editor and remove this connection again. So let's type in range mapper. So we have our input and our output and if we click on the range mapper we get our options here and here's the input lower, input upper, output lower, up, output upper. So let's connect those. And first of all we should check the data type. We have reals not vectors because the output here is a real and the input here is also a real. The input range is uh, we set it to user defined because it's not degree, it's not radians, it's not percent, nothing of these, so it's user defined. And the output range should be degree. 
down here we can define our values. So the input lower is zero. I start with my null object at zero. And let's say if I lift it 200 centimeters, I want my cube to rotate 360 degrees. So that should be it. Let's go to our view. And let's start to move our star. And you see that now our cube moves really nice. And if I set it to 200 centimeters and check the cube, it says 360 degrees. So this works perfectly fine. But we have a few more options in our range mapper. Let's just lock it here that we see it all the time. So first of all, what you see, if I move uh, far, uh, far um, more than 200 centimeters, the cube continues to spin. And he continues in the same with the same factor that he did in our defined range. So he will just continue this range if I move upwards. The same goes if I go into negative values. So below zero, he will also continue to rotate the way he did before. For that, we have uh, two clamp options, clamp lower and clamp upper. If I clamp lower, he will um, stop to rotate if I go below my lowest input. And if I say clamp upper, he will stop rotating if I go um, above my um, 200 centimeters here. So this is how we can clamp um, our values. You can also just use one so that it's clamped at the lowest input, but not at the upper input. He will continue to spin all the time. Like this. Reverse, of course, just reverses the um, the rotation. So now it goes it uh, goes to the left, and if I remove it again, it rotates to the right. So if you click reverse, he actually just uh, puts a zero in here, and reverses your uh, rotation. We also have a curve down here. So by default. Um, Expresso will map this range linear onto th this range. So if we have our curve, your spline is activated. So I can take two. So by default, the curve will look like this. So we have here our input range and here our output range, which means if we move through our input range, we will directly also move linear through our output range. So if I go into the middle of my input range, in this case 100, and I will check the curve, I will be in the middle of my um, output range. So I will be at 180 degrees. But we can also um, define another curve here, something like this. Like this. Let's clamp it. So, which means if I start to move my null object upwards, uh, not a lot will happen in the rotation of my cube, but in the end, when I reach the 200, the rotation will be very fast. So let's try this. I start to lift it, it's pretty slow, and in the end, it starts to rotate super fast. You can also do something like this, which will ease your rotation. So if I start now, it starts to rotate slow and it um, will um, get slower in the end. Maybe like this, more dramatic. So you see it's a smooth ending. You can also make a curve like this. You can create new points here by control clicking on the on the curve. And if you make a curve like this, this will um, cause our cube to spin in the one direction and then spin back. Let's try this. It spins to the left and then it spins to the right again. So this is also a great way to, um, to define how the movement of your mapped object should look like. So in this lesson, you learned what the range mapper is and a few options in the range mapper. And in the next one, we will 
try to build a nice, funny example with our range mapper.